There's nothing easier to grow than perennial vegetables and one of those that I always grow is rhubarb. There's nothing that beats having rhubarb pie or rhubarb crumble after a meal. You can greatly enhance your harvest. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get the best out of your rhubarb. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplified Gardening where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. There are many ways in which to start growing rhubarb and although you can plant them from seed, most people will grow them from crowns. Now, there are advantages to this. With crowns, you can get a small harvest in your first year. With seed, you have to wait for two years. Now we have our plants and however you decide to grow them, whether that is from seed or crowns, we next need to look at where to plant them. Now, rhubarb, well, they are not fussy about the soil quality and it can be pretty much anything. However, they are really hungry plants and they require huge amounts of water. So plant them next to a water container which will save you a lot of work. And as you can see, mine are planted right next to this IBC container. So when I am watering in and out of this IBC container, well, any overspill gets absorbed by the soil and then that helps these plants to uh, grow really well. You can see this one here is much taller than the others and that's because it's getting more water from the overspill. As I've already said, they require huge amounts of water to do really well. Let's take the soil into consideration. When you're planting your rhubarb, you need to think about the soil. It needs lots of organic matter dug into it. Now, I know I said they're not fussy about the soil and what I meant by that is they're not bothered whether it's clay soil or sandy soil or anything like that. But the more organic matter you can put into that soil, the more water retention will help with these. And um, when you're coming to preparing this bed of soil, you need to put a couple of things in it. Something like this farmyard manure would be fantastic or uh, chicken manure pellets. They are big leafy plants and they require huge amounts of nitrogen. So um, a good, good chunk of chicken manure pellets in that soil is really going to help and give regular feedings throughout the season as well. And another thing that will help get your plants established is some bone meal. If you can get some bone meal into the ground, that's really going to help the uh, plant and the crown send down those root systems in order to support the foliage like this. I mean, some of these leaves are getting on for over a metre, uh, three and a half feet wide, maybe, maybe a bit more. Another thing we want to be mindful of is where we're planting, as I said, and that we need to consider planting them in a sunny position. These are like solar panels and they really absorb that sun to feed the crown. So it's fantastic if you can get them out and put them in a nice sunny position. They will do really well. And that's when you will get the huge growth that you see here. So the other thing about uh, rhubarb is they're accumulators and they have huge tap roots that push right down into the lower depths of the soil and they pull those nutrients up and it's those nutrients that are able to fund this growth. Now when you're planting them, plant them up on a mound because that will stop water pooling into the crown and rotting it. And when you're planting the crowns, then plant them just below the soil layer, about an inch. But if you have clay soils, then you want them to protrude through that ground so that they are not buried by clay when it's caked. And rhubarb is great in containers too. When growing in containers, you want to use something that's about 70 litres or 19 US gallons because these get huge plants, as you can see. Also, when growing in containers, make sure you put the feed in there and make sure they never dry out because containers will dry out. It's a very thirsty plant. You need to be watering it constantly if you're putting it in a container. Now, at the start of spring, just as those buds are starting to push through the soil, well, you need to give them a really good mulching of manure. Something like uh, a farmyard manure, a horse manure, you know, cow manure, something like that. And give them a really good thick mulch, about a half a foot to a foot's worth of mulch. And what this does, 
when the weather comes uh, in the early spring as it typically does the rain will beat the nutrients out of that compost and push it down into the soil levels and the plant can take that up as well and also at this stage like I said give it another sprinkling of chicken manure pellets too they are hungry plants so during the spring as they're pushing these buds now is the perfect time to decide how you're going to grow it you can force rhubarb and this will give you much uh, more delicate stems and to do this you literally put on a dark container over top an upturned dustbin or a chimney pot something like that you must emit all light but be wary doing this don't do it too often because it puts a lot of strain on the plant if you're not forcing your rhubarb well then's the time to give it a huge amount of water I know it rains a lot in spring, but this is when them buds are starting to push and getting that reservoir of water down now is important. So when you're first starting to see those shoots coming, give them about 12 litres of water per plant per week. It's a huge amount of water, but it really does make a big difference. Throughout the season, you're going to need to give them additional feeds. And what I do is I feed once a week and I alternate. So one week I'm going to give them a load of chicken manure pellets and I'm literally just throwing them down towards the crown there so that when it rains or when I water, those chicken manure pellets spread and get pushed down into the soil. And then maybe the second or third week out of a month, I will give them a seaweed feed as well, which is pushing even more different macro and micronutrients as well as trace minerals into the ground here for these plants. And that's exactly how I got these plants to be like this and how I produced stems like this. Now, from time to time, well, your plant is going to get stressed and tired and this whole row here is created from one single plant where I split it. This reinvigorates that plant. Now, um, to do that, I have uh, a, a very old video from about three or four years ago. Three years ago, I think, when I done these ones. I'll put that up in the uh, corner here for you and down in the description. But essentially, you're splitting the crown and replanting that crown. And if you are wanting to grow rhubarb, you really need to see how I planted these. Now, initially, I planted them just down by there at the bottom of the garden, right along the fence line. But um, I found that they weren't in the best place because I removed that fence and that was where I was getting manures dropped off. So I moved them last year up here. And uh, at that point, we lost quite a bit of the root system and it really set these back. But we did have a good crop of them even still last year and this year they are looking absolutely amazing. Now, from time to time, your rhubarb is going to set up a flower stalk and it's really important to remove that right away because if you allow it to flower it then turns to seed this draws out huge amounts of energy out of the crown and it can kill your plants now this particular one i left way too long because it's at another section of our garden behind the fruit orchard and i totally didn't see it and i've been concentrating down this end of the garden uh, for most of the year so I never really got up there and as you can see it's totally gone to seed now these seed I've cut off they are falling off already and I'll collect them and I will grow them next year and show you how you can grow rhubarb from seed but like I said it's really important if you see that flower stalk cut it off as soon as you see it you still get um, your rhubarb for that year but after the growth of that year you need to split your crowns. Rhubarb is pretty resilient as a plant but it does have a few things that you need to watch for and one of those is crown rot. Now crown rot is devastating to rhubarb if you don't catch it. As soon as you see crown rot there's a thing that you need to do and that is to literally get in there with a knife and cut out that section out of the crown to prevent that rot from uh, spreading any further. Now don't worry about the crown it will recover really quickly if you get all of that crown rot out. If you don't that crown rot will definitely kill your plant. And another thing that you should watch for with rhubarb 
is slugs. Now slugs will get on these and they will decimate the plant. Now I use nematodes in which to control this and um, although they're quite expensive to buy they basically they they're suspended in a clay formation um, but they are really expensive to buy so I make my own and I have a video on that also which shows you how to make your own slug nematodes and I'll put that down in the description below too but you really need to control those slugs also so we're at the back of my fruit orchard at the moment and we've got some smaller rhubarb here like I said I haven't paid any attention to these and they've still done well now when picking your rhubarb it's really important in which to twist the plant as you pull and you want to take it out and have this little white section on the stalk you want to be pulling it all don't ever cut the rhubarb at the stem because that will rot back into the crown and this is a perfect way you get nice length of stalk clean and you've just got this little tag on the end that shows you you did a good job in harvesting your rhubarb and you can literally just pick it and twist and again you see that little white section on the stem and another nice length of rhubarb there now when harvesting your rhubarb don't take more than one third of the plant any one year i would suggest now these will continue to keep growing so you can keep keep harvesting but um what i would suggest you do is don't take any more than a third of the plant i just take a couple of stalks from each and um towards the end of sort of june i would stop harvesting altogether and then allow these leaves uh, time to pull that nutrition and goodness back down into the crown to feed it ready for winter. Something I always get asked is about the rhubarb leaves. So when you harvest you cut the leaf off and obviously we eat the stalks. We can't eat these because they're poisonous to us but something I always get asked is can they be put on the compost and the answer to that is yes. Another thing you can do with them, like most accumulators, like the nettles and the comfrey and everything else, you can use rhubarb leaves and make a rhubarb tea. Those leaves are holding a lot of those nutrients that have been pulled up from deep within the soil and they can be used to make your own rhubarb tea. So literally just put this into a bucket of water along with all the other leaves, cram them down, cover it in water and put it away for about six weeks. It will smell when you make it but it will make a fantastic feed for your plants and it's ideal much like comfrey for things that are fruiting or flowering. So just bear that in mind. You can use it in multiple ways. Don't throw it away, put it in the compost or make teas out of it. In the autumn or fall, well, we need to start pulling away the leaves that are rotting and they will yellow and then start turning to a mess. Pull them away from the plant. Don't worry about the plant over winter. We need to get that sorted, but it will, um, clear up that area away because one of the biggest things for attracting slugs is decaying matter. Remove them all that are, are rotting and uh, gone yellow and put them into your compost. Now don't worry about over winter whether or not the uh, crowns will freeze because they actually need that freezing time. They do much better after getting frozen in the winter. There are hundreds of varieties of rhubarb some of them are very dainty and delicate and then you have others like this i've had a few chats with people and originally i was given this plant as or i purchased this plant as timpley early but that's been thrown into a bit of uh, confusion lately i suppose because uh, a few other people suggest that it might be champagne so Although it was purchased under one thing, there is a chance that it could have well been marked up wrong at the nursery. Now, I've had this plant for nearly 12 years and it started off just as a small crown and it's done all of this across here where I've split it over the years. And the great thing is, it's a fantastic plant. It does really well for me. Um, whatever the variety, 
um, whether it's champagne or whether it's Timberley early, um, follow these directions because they will really help you out. Something else I get asked a lot about these is, why do you want to grow them so big? Aren't they tough when you eat them? And do you know what? They're not. You can pull the biggest uh, harvest out of these things and they are just as tender when they're cooked as any other of the dainty varieties I have at the back there and um, they are fantastic and I will eat a fair bit of this throughout the year. Now the two stems I showed you earlier on well both of those went into a crumble and we ate that crumble with no issues at all it wasn't stringy so don't be afraid to grow it large like this it really does give you a lot of bang for its buck. If you found value in this video, then you can subscribe here. And when you've done that, if you wanna know how I grew these from crowns, then this is the next video that you should watch. I'm Tony O'Neill, this is Simplify Gardening, where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. Remember folks, you reap what you sow, and I'll see you in the next one.